I will punish it when I get to it. There are some whose destiny, karma destiny is that. Nothing wrong with that. That is not what is demanded. Asceticism and renunciation. She wants us to enjoy. Boga Mosha, enjoy what I gave you. But do the right enjoyment, do it Dharma way. So that is Sanyasa Dharma. Again, as I said, that is not the most favorite path. But there you are taking care of you and your soul. But you are not taking care of other creations of mother. Either animals, any, any, any life forms, family, anyone other than us. We have to take care of them. Like the word, I am my brother's keeper. That's the word in English. Meaning, I am responsible for you. I have to do what I can. I can give you money, I can give you health care, I can give you all that. But that is temporary. We think of the soul. Let them know their soul. Let them come up. That is what I prefer. But that soul is part of her. So when you do that, that is real uh, reality. You are near to her. Okay, you have done something for that aspect which exists in him as his soul. I have helped him. If I help him by giving all the necessary things, fine. I can give medical care. I can take care of him, which is good. But it won't be 1,000 of what I do by I'm doing what I'm doing to him now, making him understand Atmanyam and also giving with the Brahma Vidya. So when I do that, the thousand fold more effective. As a Hasuki, as a renunciate, I can reach Samadhi, that up to that only I can go. I would not fulfill what is our desire. But some souls have to do that. That is their destiny, that is the karma, and nothing wrong. It's very, very honorable compared to 99% of the soul who don't even know any of it. They live, they die. You're born, your family, a nice family, nice education, everything nice and fun, time comes to leave. What have you accomplished? In that life, you really have an accomplishment. You used up the currency, you earn past life. And you go into the deficit, you can enjoy it. But the true enjoyment comes when you do this. Help other souls. Whatever mother gave it to her. So that is special. You cannot have it. You can go anywhere and you won't get that Arvajana, Brahmanitya, and the ability, knowledge, and the means to share it with others. You won't have an opportunity. But here you have an opportunity. That is an always that everyone I please come understand what's going on. And participate in the vision of the temple. So that the boons will be tremendous. You have to live many, many lifetimes. To have that. Each one of us have had 840,000 lifetimes, not 840, 840,000. This may be the last one, and you can take advantage of it. So, fulfill Divine Mother's wish, that goes into Bhog Moksha. In other words, fulfill, fulfilling her desire is to understand her, know everything about that world, and share that. That is fulfilling her desire. By being a renunciate, being ascetic, I won't be able to do that. I want to take care of myself, I'll have a self knowledge, I'll become part of her. But I have not fulfilled. In the process of fulfilling, she wants to be enjoyed. And she teaches you how to do it. Enjoy this life the fullest. But be dharma. Dharma, artha, kama, moksha. We do not deny anything. We are not even judgmental. You, each one of you. But go through this. Follow dharma. Do business, any economic activity. Uh, the karma. Karma is this year, but not in a lustful way. Lustful way is a part of it, but do it dharmically. So that's all. Do it dharmic way. Don't, no violence to any other being. If you can do them, that's okay too. If you can do it dharmically. Dharma, the karma, and moksha. The karma includes all the desires. Desires to divine mother itself is a karma. But that is a higher level of uh, that takes you to higher level. And ultimately, think of one end point. Moksha is an end point. And moksha itself is a very complex word. That moksha we refer to is finishing up your life. Go to it, uh, spend time to enjoy it. Then you come right back, start your travel again. Because you have to go to higher planes of existence. She's telling us now, you do all of it, now you can do it. If you fulfill my desire, which is all the happiness, having out anything you want, that Martha Kama Moksha, in the nicest possible way, and I'll grant you the grace to be able to do that. So, wanting to do it and to be able to 
do it are two different things. To do that, you have to have a grace. Knowledge alone won't do that. Okay, you know everything. But that alone won't be enough to go to the three hour state and do contact business. That's what we do. They go to three hour state. We, we uh, communicate with all the forces here, which you don't see, some of you see. These are super sensual forces. You communicate, we have a job to do. My job is to interact with them, learn from them, finish that process what she gave us, finish my house. And she's given us many, many things to do that successfully. Otherwise, you cannot. Like I repeatedly say, this book cannot be built by a human. I'm obviously a human. I could do it, it's not done yet, but mostly done. With that help, and I'll go through some of the help she has given, not me, because I won't be worthy of that. It has to be for the humanity which is destined to get that. And you obviously are part of it. You know for sure you will get that. But the humanity has to get it. So we have to spread. And we will do that. And years from now, it will be very, very exclusive ways. From all around, already we have people from Middle East, from Australia, from Africa, many of them come and get it. But they're in a small person. We need a big thing. Right now, we are not ready to entertain and to be able to do that. And we don't have infrastructure to do that. So we keep quiet. What do you think you know, people who are here, you know it. But most of the world doesn't. Although Rakesh tells me they know because we have these talks, almost 500 of them on the Facebook. And I get calls from Muslims, Middle East. So obviously they are touched. They seem to understand the reality. In fact, one in Sheikh, I teased him. I said, are you a good Muslim? He said, yes, very well to man. I said, what are you? He said, I worship five times. Mahavad, look at my heart, do all that. Then I told him, do you know you are committing uh, uh, bad stuff? The Quran does not allow you. And they don't, you're not even supposed to know this. He said, it doesn't matter. He knows the Prophet has been alive, you will have his path and his teachings. They are very practical. You don't judge. You just open the door, you come and take it from Mother. It's between you and Mother. So I repeatedly say, she's a personal goddess here for each one of you. What you learn today will be between her and you. Whatever I say, doesn't matter. You carry one message. That would be meant just for you. Strange how same talk so many people interpret that and take it in a different way. So I figured out between her, my mother and you. And you are so special. She's a personal goddess. If you follow all the things. So Bhoga Moksha is talking about what Krishna taught. And that is a beautiful concept. And now look at the last. Try to see that Bhoga and Moksha technically incompatible. How can that be compatible? Moksha we always talk about renunciation, the period of attachment, no desire. That is usual yoga. But look at the boga. How it change, how she changes boga, the desire, into satisfaction. Content of desire. So desire can now be content without her help. So we always desire something. If you have one dollar, you want thousand, thousand, you want hundred thousand, hundred thousand, you want a million, and you want a million. Everything, life's activity, when you go to bed at that day, you don't have contentment. There's always something you want, which you don't have. Always. There's no, no way you can get out of it. But she gives you the, the, the wisdom, understanding, and the grace to be satisfied, content, and charitable. She gives you that. That is a grace. That is hard to learn. Look at the second word, lust. That becomes love, praying, not conditional, unconditional. Because that's what she's giving us. Unconditional love, nothing expected. That becomes praying. So lust can become praying if you understand this and have her divine grace. That she will grant you. Then the last part, passion. That becomes compassion. You become compassionate in any life form, not just a human. Any life form, we become very compassionate, but the stomach is a passion. So she will change it to compassion. So how would you like to have all these three? Satisfaction, pain, and compassion. So she does it. So boga becomes yoga. And it's a beautiful, beautiful concept and a beautiful, beautiful chant for us to enjoy. So she used the word fulfillment. Renunciation is one way. Detachment is one way. Fulfillment is the ideal way. But fulfill it with her desire, with her thought, with the dharmic way. 
To achieve that, she has given us so many things. I, I just mentioned a couple of unique things. She has given us magnificent Raja Gopra. She said, I have many, many aspects. My children will know only some of my aspects, and they have predisposition to follow me in that way. So provide them with all the possible ladies who are needed for the world. So 520 of them she has given us, and we did the Prana Pratishta for them. She did stop there. I will not even go over 20 and 30, but I'm not connected with them. We will have many of them, very, very intense aspect. Once, we, once I entered the game, I learned a lot about so many ladies, what they are, what they represent, how are they presenting me, although I'm not related to them. Now I'm starting because she has given them to us. Then she said, once you install me all my aspects as a prana pratishta, you got to continue the relationship. I wish you a four months long. How are you going to do that? You cannot go there and do it. Then she said, I will grant you the Shakti card. Do you have the final? Okay, you see the Shakti Garba in the back, in the bottom.